Good morning, ladies and gentlemen in the media. Welcome to our post-cabinet brief for Thursday, October 27, 2016. This morning, the brief will be given by the Minister of State, the Honorable Joseph Harmon. <laughs> Slip of the tongue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Archer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and welcome to our post-cabinet press briefing. These are matters which were deliberated on at cabinet meeting, which was held on Tuesday, the 25th of October, 2016. The Honorable Minister of Public Infrastructure, brief cabinet on the recent spate of blackouts that were the country was experiencing. And at the last post-cabinet briefing, I did indicate to you that the Minister of Public Infrastructure was asked to look at this situation and to prepare a brief for cabinet. The Honorable Minister explained that the blackouts were caused by problems at the Ghana Power and Light Inc. in relation to its maintenance schedule and its transmission and distribution networks. The blackouts were occurring in Demerara, Essequibo, and Bartica. The Honorable Minister gave cabinet timelines for the rectification of the problems. Specifically, it was stated that new generation units had already been procured for Bartica and the Essequibo Coast. Cabinet indicated its concern about this matter and advised the Honorable Minister to regularly inform the affected residents of the problem and the time frame for addressing them to vigorously pursue the plan to achieve power generation from renewable sources in the near future and to ensure that the plans which were being put in place for the immediate relief to the residents that it be pursued aggressively. These matters, the Honorable Minister gave Cabinet the assurance will be dealt with in a very, very timely manner. Cabinet was also briefed by the Minister of Legal Affairs who presented a report on his attendance at the Financial Action Task Force International Cooperation Review Group Conference that was held in Paris, France. The Attorney General informed Cabinet that a motion recommending Guyana's removal from the compliance document was passed, paving the way for Guyana to exit the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force as well. The Honorable Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General further informed Cabinet that Guyana would now be expected to prepare for the business rounds of deliberations. The conference had also examined the issue of de-risking and a paper on the establishment of criteria for correspondent banking was presented to the conference. Cabinet agreed that the Honorable Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General but issue a statement on the report in the media. The Honorable Minister of Public Security also reported the Cabinet that he had attended a joint United States Caribbean State Security Dialogue at the U.S. State Department in Washington, D.C., the United States of America. The Honorable Minister informed Cabinet that his report on Guyana's progress on whistleblower legislation, juvenile justice, and state assets recovery 
was well received at the dialogue and that the U.S. State Department had pledged support for our country's effort in these matters. As a sort of a follow-up, I am advised by the Honorable Minister of Public Security that as of yesterday, that the United States government through its embassy here in Georgetown has started to take follow-up action in that regard. It was also reported that a presentation was made on the risking at that conference as well in relation to Guyana's banking system and its socio-economic implications and that we were assured that the issues raised would be addressed. Copies of a joint action statement on the outcome of the dialogue were given to members of cabinet and it included in the statement were commitments to substantially reduce illicit drug trafficking in the Caribbean, the promotion and advancement of public safety and security, the promotion of social justice, and the establishment of a strong partnership for the future. Cabinet then gave its approval for the participation of Guyana at the 22nd session of the Conference of the Parties, that is COP22, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to be held in Marrakesh, Morocco, from November 7th to the 18th, 2016. This conference is expected to be an important step in implementing the Paris Agreement which was adopted at COP21 last year. 81 parties representing 60% of global emissions have ratified the Paris Agreement so far. It is expected that Ghana's delegation will be headed by His Excellency the President and will include the Honorable Minister of Finance, Mr. Winston Jordan, the head of the Office of Climate Change, the director of the Department of the Environment, Mrs. Ndibi Schwarz, as well as personnel from the Environmental Protection Agency and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The delegation is expected to articulate Guyana's position on priority thematic issues of finance and to encourage stronger global action in addressing climate change, especially for vulnerable countries such as Guyana. You're looking for a place to call your own, a place to unwind and relax in style. The Italian Grill, where friends gather, enjoy fine wine or a cocktail while dining in our casual atmosphere. It's easy to make any event special when you're among friends. Serving lunch and dinner and using only the freshest ingredients. The Italian Grill, it's time to make it your own. Guyana will be represented at the Islamic Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization's first conference of education ministers to be held in Tunis, Tunisia, from October 27 to 28, 2016. The government and the Ministry of Education will be represented by Mr. Vincent Alexander, technical advisor to the Honorable Minister of Education, and the conference will provide participants the opportunity to discuss relevant issues, exchange views, and plan joint action for educational development. Cabinet was presented with two, the reports of two forensic audits and reports on the Sparandam Housing Project, known as Pradoville 2, and the operations of the Ghana Cricket World Cup, Ghana World Cup Inc. These were presented to the Cabinet by the Honorable Minister of Finance. Cabinet, upon examination of the reports, concluded that in both cases, 
there were indications of criminal culpability that required further investigation. Cabinet therefore agreed that in each case, a special prosecutor's team would be established, that the Honorable Minister of Legal Affairs would submit a report to Cabinet within one week on the composition of such a team, that the reports would be handed over to the police for criminal investigations to commence in, into those matters. Cabinet continued to give, to grant its no objections to contracts. As you know, this morning the Public Procurement Commission was sworn in, and therefore this might be a feature that will no longer be part of Cabinet's reporting because the Public Procurement Commission will assume that responsibility. But Cabinet gave its no objection to contracts as follows for the construction of a fence, walkway, an extension of the guard hut facilities here at the Minister of the Presidency, the sum of $41,206,660. A contract was awarded to JPM General Construction and Engineering Service. For the construction of a waiting room at the public hospital study on the Escribo Coast, region number two, contract for the sum of $27,765,461, awarded to Technicon Investment. For the rehabilitation of the accident and emergency ward, a charity hospital, region number two, a contract in the sum of $16,817,319, a contract awarded to M. Sukai Contracting Service. For the construction of a cafeteria and multipurpose complex at Queen's College in Georgetown, the sum of $44,936,672 awarded to Builders, Hardware, and General Supplies. For the completion of a call center at Enmore on the east coast of Demerara, region number four, a contract in the sum of $59,616,000 contract awarded to Builders Hardware and General Supplies. For the rehabilitation of a panel bridge at Liliandal in region number four, a contract in the sum of $81,274,450, a contract awarded to H. Knott and Sons Civil Engineering Contractors. Those of you who traverse the railway embankment will recognize that this is a bridge just uh, west of the Arthur Chung Conference Center. And the intention is to make, rather than be, making it, being it a panel bridge, to rehabilitate it and make it a firm standing uh, bridge. For the rehabilitation of the Burisiri Drainage Canal, region number three, a contract in the sum of $24,325,000 awarded to S. Mirage Contracting Service. For the construction of Rip Rap River Defense at Bellevue, West Bank Demerara, region number three, a contract in the sum of $136,741,000. Contract awarded to Duodat Singh Construction Firm. For the supply of motor vehicles for the Special Project Unit of the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, in the first instance, um, two sport utility vehicles, that is, open back vehicles for the unit, a contract in the sum of 
26,774,756 to Bihari Automotive Limited. In the second lot, lot two, a motor car in the sum of $3,500,000, a contract awarded to Massey Industries Ghana Limited. In lot three, a contract for the supply of four pickup type vehicles in the sum of $31,400,000 awarded to Massey Industries Ghana Limited. Superfoods assures the best quality corn and mixed vegetables. Our decade of experience and reliability certainly will help your cooking experience. Our farm fresh corn and mixed vegetables are always picked at prime season and canned to perfection. Once you taste Superfoods corn and mixed vegetables, you will know the difference. Superfoods corn and mixed vegetables, highest quality at the lowest price. Call Superfoods today. Located at 8 Rumfeld Industrial Estate, Georgetown. Call 223-1030. Or two two three ten thirty five. For the construction and delivery of one cattle barge to the Ghana Livestock Development Authority, a contract in the sum of nineteen million nine hundred and sixty eight thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars to Industrial Fabrications Incorporated in Fab. For the supply of computers, printers, and network infrastructure, for the expansion of the integrated crime information system, a contract in the sum of $42,770,320 awarded to Massey Technologies Ghana Limited. For the supply, delivery, installation, and testing of equipment for the New Amsterdam Technical Institute, contract in the sum of $28,038,200, awarded to South Caribbean distributors, and in the sum of $9,963,000, contract awarded to the Hardware Depot. For consultancy services for reviewing and updating the water quality regulations, the Ministry of Communities contract in the sum of 88,400 United States dollars, contract awarded to Alfonso Olez E. Perez in the sum of 88,400. Finally, for the procurement of dietary supplies for the Mazzoni prison, contract in the sum of $55,179,096, a contract awarded to Guyana's Green Grocer, and in the sum of $20,117,880, contract awarded to Paradise Food Products. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, those are the matters discussed and decisions made at the cabinet meeting which was held on the 25th of October 2016. Thank you. I now take your questions. Madam I respect you, sir. I have an interest in the forensic audit on Prado Hill too. I think that was done some time back. Um, and there was an amendment to the law that they so called the right to actual large prosecutions, why then is this issue being handed over to the police? Well, SOKU is, um, as we made this very clear before, a part of a unit of the Ghana Police Force, and that these are criminal investigations, and therefore the decision is to let that it goes to the police, and the police decide whether the SOCO or civil uh, criminal investigation department will deal with it. But as far as government is concerned, the matter should be investigated um, by the criminal investigation elements within the Ghana Police Force. Yes, sir. 
Minister, concerns have been raising over news that the government will be rehabilitating the Orta Chung Convention Center um, at a cost of $1.4 billion. Uh, but apart from that, two questions. What is the urgency to have the conference center rehabilitated? Uh, so much so that it will be out of operation for quite a few months. And can you say what are some of the repairs that will be conducted there? That's one. Two, the government's move to hold cabinet meetings at the army mess has also raised some concerns. Uh, up to, I think it was Wednesday, the opposition leader had some things to say about that in the, one of the dailies. Mm -hmm. um, Minister, can you say why no other government buildings was chosen for this purpose? And thirdly, the report, the forensic audit report into Pradeville and the Guyana World Cup. Can you say what are some of the Ill illegalities found? And finally, can you give us an update on the state asset recovery bill? Thank you. It seems as if you, you've taken the entire um, press conference. You have nothing else for anybody to say. He wasn't here. <laughs> I see. So he didn't get the, he didn't get the memo. Okay, so far as the, the Art of Young Conference sent is concerned, there are some structural issues in relation to the conference center, which are issues to be addressed by the contractor. These sums of money that you have identified are being provided by the Chinese government that had actually given the convention center as a gift so that these structural issues that, which are, have actually arisen over time will require the, convention, the conference center to be closed. If at any time you went into the conference center on the bottom floor and you head towards the, the, southern, the southern entrance to the, to the conference center, you will see that the entire floor is sunk. And therefore, the building has now become a little unstable as a result of that. And these um, repairs and renovations work to be done were actually the, the Chinese contractors had actually gone there. They had done an assessment of what needed to be done. And it was the, not, it is not government of Ghana money. This is money from the Chinese government that have been part of that contract and they are going to fix that problem. It was a problem that was, I believe, in the original design and therefore it, the, it is structural in nature and that they are going to fix it. So the conference center will be closed from, I believe it is already announced from December for a period of about four months or so to allow for that work to be done. So that's, um, that's the, the conference center. And I want to make it clear again that this is not monies that are coming from the public treasury. It is being paid for by the Chinese as a part of that gift which is given to the people of Guyana. Um, the second matter you raised about cabinet and the uh, location at Kiampayangan as, and as to why no other government building. As you're aware, this, I did report that there was a con contract for the repairs and renovations to be done to the cabinet room here in this building. I only a few minutes ago also announced a contract for the rehabilitation of the fence and the gate and the guard hut as you come in from Shift Chandra Paul Drive into the Ministry of the Presidency. And so there's a lot of work to be done on, this, on these buildings. Um, you would recognize that since we came into office that we had to do a tremendous amount of work in this complex to bring it to the state where we are. This room, for example, where you are sitting was not what it used to be. In fact, it was something else before and we, we fixed it, rehabilitated it to make it comfortable for us all. The cabinet room, those of you who attended the swearing ceremony earlier for the uh, commissioners of the Public Procurement Commission, 
will recognize the air condition goes on and off. It is old, it needs to be fixed, and we have to fix that. And it is not just for the members of cabinet. It is for the Guyanese public at large that have to do business here in Guyana. When ambassadors or foreign dignitaries come to present their credentials and so on, they come here. And we have to ensure at all times that this country's image is always at its best. And therefore, the works to be done here at the cabinet were identified very early in 2016 and became part of our budget um, allocations for this year so that it was not that we just discovered this. So that the move of cabinet had to be into a secure place. We would have uh, recognized also that there is an act which is called the Freedom of Information Act, signed and assented to by um, President Barajagdi in 2011, the same gentleman who's talking about cabinet being here and cabinet being there. In that act, it provides for the security of cabinet, the security of documents that uh, have to deal with cabinet, and it exempts any cabinet document from public disclosure unless it is specifically cleared by the responsible minister. And so the section of the act is very elaborate and it provides a sort of protection on cabinet discussions, cabinet documents, cabinet decisions. So those are very important issues. So that whenever cabinet meets to discuss the business of the people of this country. It has to be in a place that is secured. It has to be in a place where the conversations or the discussions of cabinet cannot be easily picked up on or understood or learned by anybody else who are not entitled to the receipt of that information. Cabinet documents are always classified as secret. And that's the security classification that requires the holders of any document that's classified as secret. It puts on them a certain responsibility to be safe and secured in it. <clears throat> yes, I've seen some um, issues in the media about why didn't we go to the Art Chung Conference Center. But even before we made that decision, it was public knowledge that the center will be closed from the 4th of December for at least four months or so. The works to be done here in the cabinet room in the ministry will take about three to four months. And therefore, that as a venue had to be ruled out. We've looked at several other options. And in the view of cabinet, that the safest option was the officers club camp in Ghana which provided the facilities for our cabinet to meet, provided the facilities for our cabinet to be able to do its recording, and provided the facility for cabinet discussions to be in a secure place, which is not easily accessible, which is not easily heard by persons who are not authorized to receive the information of cabinet discussions. And of course, um, the minimal costs um, are associated with that, and we have to always keep an eye on, um, on costs. So that is, um, that is an important feature. And um, the, the other gentlemen who have gone on record, I'm, I'm quite surprised at the, the quality of the, uh, the statements attributed to persons who are previous chairmen of cabinet, who understand what the law is, who understand the security requirements of a cabinet meeting that will make these statements. Cabinet is not meeting, not a place where you go buy a barbecue. As some cases used to happen in the past, you go to Linden, to the Watuka, you have signed two documents, you keep the rest of the meeting by the poolside. That's not how you deal with the business of the people of this country. 
We are a serious government, and we will take the business of the people's business very seriously. And therefore, we had looked at all of the options, and that was the best choice in the circumstance. As I said, it is a temporary measure until such time as the work on this building is completed. You raised some other questions, but I think I'll give the other um, members of the media an opportunity to ask their questions as well. Ronald, yeah, the uh, Minister, you spoke about uh, the African blackouts and the Ministry taking some steps to uh, rectify this. Can you say what are some of the renewable um, energy steps the Ministry will be taking um, in relation to the Escobar Coast and um, elsewhere, and how soon would this come on stream? Also, uh, with relation to the foreign forensic audit, uh, you said that a special prosecution will be implemented. Can you give us some more information on this special prosecution? Uh, would it be local persons, international, or anything? Okay, insofar as the action plan for the Guyana Power and Light, um, I did indicate that the minister had identified um, new generating sets for these places. The problem with the Essequibo Coast was that it had not been converted from 50 hertz to 60 hertz, and that the majority of the equipment that are available are 60 hertz equipment. What that means is that there has to be a conversion, and that conversion, my understanding is, is an expensive exercise, and therefore the previous administration ran away from it. But we are going to confront it, and therefore, we have, um, we're looking now for, in the first instance, 50 hertz um, equipment. And we have not just limited the, the search to local, but we've gone regional in that regard. And we will find a solution to the blackout situation for the people of the Essequibo Coast, as we will for all the people of Guyana. The minister also, cabinet also had an extensive discussion on the use of renewable sources of energy, the use of, um, of wind, the use of solar, the use of, of hydro, and all of those were discussions which we have. And um, the, the Minister of Public Infrastructure, I believe, will release a report in that regard within a few days. The other one was the forensic audit oh, and the, the special, the prosecution team. Well, the prosecution team will not be limited to just local, local um, personnel. It will um, have a wider, um, wider sweep, and we are looking to bring persons who are capable of handling these matters that, that are coming up. So yes, we are looking at the region in the first instance as well, and then further afield. Um, I did indicate to you that we were getting offers of assistance, not just from the region, but out of the region. And um, because the, the question of, of corruption, the question of transparency in government is something that is international, and we were getting assistance in that regard from other sources. Um, one, one last follow-up. Um, what are some of the um, criminalities found in the forensic audit? Well, the audit found that they were plots of lands that were transferred at prices that were not uh, market prices, that the, the valuation which, was, which were given um, were, were un, unusual for, for that time and for that venue, for that location. The audit also looked at the transfer of a particular piece of land that was not far from what is now known as Pradoville II for the price on which it was transferred and then compare that to the price at which um, the members of the previous administration almost gifted themselves those portions of land. So these are some of the issues that um, has been raised, and um, we are going to have to leave that now to the people who are trained at um, building a criminal case, in some cases building a civil case for them to take the necessary action. Uh, Marcel Thomas, Starbrook News. Minister, I'm, my first question is pertaining to a release sent out by the PNCR 
-hmm. However, it says um, a minister of government will be meeting with persons from the public at Congress Place. I want to know government's stance on the conflict there where you have ministers of government um, meeting persons at the party headquarters mm -hmm. on the government's business, that's one. And um, could you tell when the Iowa Cramer board would be established if names have been selected for um, that board. And a follow-up, quick, just quick follow-up to Roy Dent's question is, uh, the answer then to government moving for the four-month period of renovations from uh, GDF, that's a no. There will be no moving. You'll remain there for the four months. If we remain there for the four months, yes, that's, that is correct. That's one. Secondly, um, I cannot give you any statement on the Irocrama board at this point in time. Um, when that information is available, I give it to you. Thirdly, there was no discussion in the cabinet about um, a statement put out by, by a political party um, about uh, ministers and uh, going to meet with the public. So um, I'm not aware of, of it at this point in time you're raising it, but I'm sure we're going to look at, we'll examine that. Um, clearly there is a distinction between the government, government and parties. And um, so sometimes um, parties, even in the coalition, when they go to the party conferences and so on and make statements, we do not comment in the government. I deal with government. And I would ask maybe that you address those party matters to the political parties who made the statements. But certainly, um, as a government, we never discuss that at the cabinet. Yes. Sorry, Bill, let me catch your news. Uh, recently, there was a court order to stop the tribunal investigating uh, Mr. Campbell. Uh, we are of the understanding that uh, when that court order came, the tribunal well, yes, the matter did came up, um, did come up, sorry. Uh, the information at, at, at our disposal is that the tribunal has completed its work and that at the time the order was served on the tribunal that hearings and so on had been completed. But we are, we are law-abiding government and the requirement is that the tribunal hands over its recommendations to the president. As the, the government, since there's an order of court, we respect the order of court. And uh, the return date, I understand, on that order is the 31st of October. And therefore, the attorneys who represent the state will be given sufficient instructions to move to the court to have that order vacated so that the work of the commission can be, brought, can be concluded. The work is not concluded until the tribunal hands over its report to the president. And that is the stage where I believe we are at. But once there's an order of court, which in any way touches or concerns the matter, we'll respect the order of court and wait. That was your question. Is there another, was there another question or that was it? Oh, thank you very much. All right. Final one. Um, Minister, last week you had said that, um, as it pertains to the, the procurement of the procurement of drugs report at the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. um, something would have been given to cabinet, I think, this week or to that to that extent. Yes. Um, yes. Was that matter discussed, and where are we with it? And yes. Uh, yes, in fact, the matter was raised and discussed at cabinet. Um, what we have are 
um, are statements that have been made by, by certain persons that came to the attention of the Honorable Minister. And so, Cabinet has decided that an investigation, an inquiry, will be launched into these, into these reports and these allegations. The important matter to understand in matters of, these, of this nature is that when people make allegations, they must be prepared to come and give that information to a properly constituted inquiry. Sometimes that is the problem that you have, that someone is prepared to quietly whisper something in your ear, but they're not prepared to come to an inquiry to say, well, this is what we have found, this is what I know, and this is what I am prepared to say. So that might be a challenge, but nonetheless, because of the, the seriousness with which the administration views matters of this nature, um, the administration, the cabinet has agreed to have an investigation launched into this matter. Um, that was it, or you had another one? That was it. Thank you. As early as next week. Next week, yes. As early as next week. All right. Thank you I, very much. Chief. Yes, sir. All the good mistakes is that you know one going. I'll leave you. Take the rest of the questions we need to ask. Well, did he ask some other questions? What else did you ask? You see, it was not important. It was not important. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.